Tom Leahy, you are head of EMEA Real Assets Research at MSCI. Thank you for joining us on BTV. TV. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, the MSCI France Annual Property Index, a revealed earlier this week, uh, uh, showed that French property investments had a minus 7.7% percent perf uh, performance sorry in the 2023 calendar year uh what explains the significant decline uh the which is uh, the first negative performance reported by msci in france uh, over the last decade yes i think it's uh it's clear that the real estate market uh, across europe and indeed most of the developed world has changed dramatically really since the start of 2022 so the rapid rise in interest rates um has caused a revaluation of real estate across many markets. So France is not alone in seeing a negative total return uh, in 2023. So as you said, minus 7.7%. And that's really as uh, it's been um, driven by a, a drop in capital values. So properties have had to revalue in response to that higher rate regime. Um, and so that's that's the fact of the matter, really. It's uh, it's it's unavoidable that when the discount rate changes so dramatically in such a short space of time that real estate has to revalue. And so this 2023 outturn really reflects something that started back at the beginning of 2022. So, it, you know, it takes a while for some of these impacts to feed through into real estate, which is a slow moving asset class. And so we're really seeing the the cumulative impact of those interest rate rises. Um, and also some of the other structural changes that are impacting real estate in the post-COVID world. Mm. Uh, and you mentioned that France is not alone uh, in that uh, declining performance uh, in 2023. Uh, how does that performance compare to other uh, European markets? So at minus 7.7%, it's a little worse in 2023 some, than some of the other core European markets, let's say Germany, Sweden, the Netherlands, the UK. The UK is a little different in that 2022 was really the year where we saw a very substantial revaluation. So the UK market corrected uh, a little faster than elsewhere. If we, so if we remove the UK from the argument and just look at some of those other uh, continental European markets, France does look a little worse, but I think that's partly to do with the the the, the way our index is structured. So the French index is probably more heavily weighted towards offices than some of the other European mm. country level indices. Um, and with the shifts that are happening in the office market in particular, that's had a, an outsized impact on the French index. Whereas if you compare some of the other markets where may, maybe there's a, um, a less of a less of a, a sort of percentage of office properties and maybe you might have, you know, in the UK, the number one constituent is actually industrial in our UK index now, whereas in, you know, in, in Sweden or some of the other markets, it might be slightly more oriented towards, you know, other sectors, maybe residential or, or retail. Okay. Uh, yeah, because you mentioned the, the, the impact of offices on the overall performance in France. Uh, your uh, index shows a, a capital return of minus 14.1% uh, in 2023 for office real estate, which was uh, the most affected uh, sector in France. Uh, was that phenomenon uh, for offices also observed uh, across Europe? Yes, indeed, to a varying degree. I mean, if you if you compare, let's say we we compare the UK, France, and Germany, which are the three biggest property markets and the biggest office markets in Europe by quite a long way. Um, the cumulative decline since the start of twenty twenty two in the UK is over twenty percent for the office market, whereas and that's because we've had two years of of quite substantial falls in value in capital values for office properties in the UK, France, and Germany. As I said, they've and slower to react a little bit, especially if you look at these annual numbers. The quarterly numbers present a slightly different picture, but if we stick to the annual numbers, that minus 14% in France compares to minus 11% in Germany, both of which are record lows for the market as well. So they're both the poorest uh, performance in terms of capital values that we have on record. And, you know, our, our annual indexes go back to the, I think, the late 90s for both countries. So it really has been a very substantial correction in office prices, sorry, office values, I should say, in the last 12 months. And if France is slower to react, that also means that maybe uh, contrary to the UK, uh, it might have more decline in store uh, on the on the office front. Do I, do I, am I right to uh, uh, 
uh, to predict that? <laughs> um, oh, gosh. I think sometimes you see with the annual indexes, you see some of the um, some of the kind of the shorter term variations get ironed out. Um, I think, you know, minus 14%, that's a pretty substantial revaluation. I think we'd have to see, I think really the, the thing that will determine whether we see further falls in capital values are uh, is the behavior of the central banks. So if we start to see the ECB bring interest rates down this year, I think that should provide some security to property pricing. But obviously there are other structural issues in the office market, um, which are impacting, you know, offices in a way that, you know, industrial, for example, is not being impacted. So the shift away from the office as a as the hub of work is definitely having an impact. Worries around environmental obsolescence and technical obsolescence are also impacting office values as well. I think the thing to bear in mind, though, is that these are headline numbers for the office sector. And actually, when you dive beneath these numbers, there's quite a wide variation that sits beneath, you know, those headlines. And so some offices um, will do well and others will will probably continue to see further falls in value. Thank you very much, Tom Leahy. Uh, that's uh, it, it's always a pleasure to uh, to benefit from your insight uh, on BETV. So thank you very much for for taking the time with us today. Uh, thank you all also for being with us, and we'll see you soon on BETV. Thank you.